What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Triple Biscuits and Gravy live stream. I hope you guys are having yourselves a good evening tonight because I'm having a good evening, too. And if you're not having a good time, it's time for you to go. We're only here to have a good time. Nothing but good times. I'm glad I didn't spill my drink right there when I was doing that crazy machine out and moving my hand around too fast. What's latest in the news? Well, I don't know. I don't watch the news. But if you tuned into the personal channel of mine, then you know that we raised a little bit of money for US Sark doing some really ridiculous stuff. And you probably most of you guys here were here too. But if you weren't, there's always a link down in the description for the personal channel if you want to go over there and find out the stuff that's really going on over here. Because right here, we just uh, we just talk into the camera. We don't actually put reality on this channel. The reality's over on the other channel. Except for tonight. Except for tonight. Tonight's an exception. We got Mr. Shane Kelly of Small Town Exotics. Shane, you've probably seen Shane somewhere. If you pay attention to stuff online, especially in ball python stuff, you may have seen Shane's logo, the one that you clicked on to get to this video. You may have seen it somewhere before. I don't know. Maybe you have. Maybe you have. I don't know. I don't know what you do with your life. It's your life. Do whatever you want, man. But tonight, if you're watching this, you're going to see that logo. You're watching Triple B TV. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Shane Kelly. Hi, yeah. Shane. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, apparently. I, I don't know where that intro came from. It came right out of my, right out of here, I guess. I don't, I don't know. How you doing? Yeah, I, I'm doing great, man. Uh, yeah, you're pretty good at that gift of gab, man. You just like roll with it. It, it turns out pretty good. I got to commend you on that. Thanks. It doesn't always turn out so good. I'll tell you that right now. It doesn't <laughs> always. That's why, you know, the majority of my videos are edited. These live streams, not so much. And and other uncut videos, not so much. However, I, you got to be feeling it, I guess. Sometimes I'm feeling it. Sometimes I'm not. How about you? How do you, how do you, how do you feel about it with your own videos? Well, uh, yeah, there's definitely times when there's a lot more cuts in my videos because I'm stuttering. Or I say something that I don't want to say. It just doesn't turn out good. And then there's other times that it just flows and there's not many cuts. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's feeling, I, I love when I get in the zone though, and I can feel that it's happening and I'm just like, Oh, just go with it. Like I always try to like go with the camera, but there's definitely days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to, no, no, I just want to go back to sleep, but let's go get the camera anyway. See what happens. <laughs> yeah. So you, okay. You've done kind of a lot as far as getting yourself out there. I, I was, as I was saying in the intro, like you have put yourself out there a lot. I mean, that's, that's just due to straight hard work or just like what, like you, I mean, how, how do I, how do I say this? Like I, you got on 15 minutes of lame with snakes in the fat with Chris, which Chris has been doing that, you know, over snakes in the fat man podcast. Like that was before my time on, on anywhere on, on the internet in reptile world. So you got on his radar, you got on 50 minutes of lame, and then you became the winner of the contest. So you could be actually have the guest slot for 50 minutes of lame. Yeah. How? Well, I actually first had my first contact with Chris in one of your zoom calls when you had him on the show, that was the first time I actually had a conversation with him. So that led to 15 minutes of lame. And then after that, it was a contest. So after that, it was like no holds barred. Who's gonna who's gonna outwork it and and grind it out? And yeah, somehow somehow I won that one. So thanks to everyone out there that voted for me, and thanks to everyone that just voted. Period. I mean, the con the other contestants were are great friends of mine, and uh, yeah. So just thanks for voting. You get if involved. You did, if you didn't vote, you're slacking. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> 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 call me out like that Shane I'm busy I, don't, I forget about things there's so many things I'm supposed to do I forget about them I wanted you well okay I want to give you some credit for winning that too because you at one point you sent us a message you sent um, maybe Jesse message like what why don't you guys promote that I'm you know, get me a vote or something I'm a Cocoa Blocks distributor which would definitely have made sense in our and and, and okay I think I feel like I didn't speak clearly there you sent a message, Jesse, something about, hey, I'm a Cocoa Blocks distributor. You'd be in your guys' interest, wouldn't it, if you guys helped me win this thing to get on Chris's podcast? And we were like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And then I started working on something. And then you messaged me back, and you said, well, actually, 
actually, can you, can you not do it? I want to do it on my own. I don't want to have any outside help. I just want to do it myself. So if you could, I appreciate that you guys are going to do something for me and make posts on, you know, all the different platforms. But if you don't do it, I'd, I'd appreciate it just so I could do it myself. And that I really, I really respected that man. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. It was just one of those things. It was like, you know, I'd just rather, if I'm going to win it, I'd just rather win it on my own, by my own, you know, hard work and elbow grease, you know? I, I don't want, I don't want it to seem like, like I had to pull any strings to win, you know, like I want to win it on my own. You know what I'm talking about? It's hard to explain, but. No, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's very respectable. It's, uh, you know, you got, it's like not smart campaigning, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But but we're men and we get some of that ego and stuff going sometimes. And it's like, you know what, man, I just want to do this on my own. You know, like it's like riding a bicycle. You just got to get on it and do it sometimes. Right. Like can't have training wheels your whole life. So, yeah, we try. In fact, these days we try to eliminate the training wheels altogether. Like just yeah. get on there and go. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, I know you got lots of kids over there. I'm sure you have more experience with training wheels versus not training wheels than I do. Yeah. 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 I, I have quite a few. <laughs> that's cool man we, we're thinking about number four potentially but then it wouldn't be triple btv anymore so we can't have that yeah <laughs> triple baby tv triple biscuits stick your biscuits on the gravy i feel like i've asked you a lot of questions i'm trying to think of like some things about you that i don't already know i'm sure there are plenty you already told me we can't talk about some of them tonight which is fine I get it. Yeah, yeah. Just, There's, just one topic. Uh, just, just the one topic. All right, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Why ball pythons? Why, why? Uh, what? How long have you been keeping reptiles? Okay, so that's kind of a, kind of a hard question to answer. So this time in my life, I've been keeping reptiles since April 2019, and then I started Small Town Exotics in July of 2019. So. But there was a, a time period in my life in my early 20s where I had like one of multiple different kinds of species, like an albino Burmese, a red tail boa, the bearded dragon, different king snakes, you know, just like a, like a collector keeper. And uh, life events happened. So this time around, um, I got, I seen a genetic stripe online and I was like, man, it's time to own a ball python again, you know? And I always wanted a genetic stripe from the early 2000s, but they were expensive then. So now they're not so expensive. I got one and then that led to getting a male to possibly breed to like, I was listening to a lot of, uh, I did a lot of driving for work. So I was listening to Snakes and the Fat Man and Bullshit on the podcast thing, doing that. And then my kids showed me YouTube and I started seeing what's going on in the ball python market. And I was like, wow, man, like, the whole world has changed since I last looked at like an actual reptiles magazine. I used to get the magazines. It's like totally different now. And then, so that just led to everything that's going on today. Gotcha. Kind of a complex answer, but I mean, no, 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 it's a good answer. It's a, uh, it's, it, it makes sense. It, so you, you were into reptiles way before and then mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of popped back into your life. And then YouTube is, it sounds similar to what happened with me actually. Very, uh, yeah. very similar. And what so what made you decide that you wanted to start making video like there's th there's plenty of ways to put your name out there without making videos Vide making videos is not easiest thing to do um what when did you decide you wanted to start a channel and do all that go down that road that one man uh i i actually gotta give a shout out to miguel for that man i was uh, already getting some snakes from him me and him kind of talked about it. And then he was just like, you got to start it now. And I was like, well, let's wait till I start producing stuff, you know, cause I'm not the kind of guy that wants to be in front of a camera naturally. I had, that's a lot of stuff I had to overcome through this whole journey, but uh, that's another subject. But anyways, uh, no, he was like, just start it now, man. Now's the time. So I just did it. I just started. And then, then I just started documenting my whole journey from like, starting to build my collection, my first pairings on up to my first clutch, so all the way into today, all the good stuff, the bad stuff, just everything. I just take the whole, the whole business along for the ride on YouTube, just whatever's happening, good or bad. Just, just put it out there. Yeah, I know what that's like. Um, Miguel got you. So I think that was, had you been to Miguel's place already? Now here's the other thing, like 
besides just like the more recent thing, getting on Snakes and the Fat Man and, and making that happen, like somehow you were able to film at Freedom Breeder and Miguel's place, I think, before you even came here. And th- those are yeah. not the two easiest places. I mean, Miguel's a very nice guy, but he's not the easiest guy to line something up with. And right. and Jesse will almost always just tell somebody they can't, A, either not can't come into the facility, or B, definitely can't film. Like, steady, stepping foot past the front office is just, that's that's like not really commonly done let alone back with a with a camera to go film stuff. So how did you get in with both of those folks? So, uh, well, right from the beginning, I just started networking with people that are kind of localish to me, something that I could drive to, you know? So like uh, the first time I met Miguel was actually the first day I met Dead Mouse. I went down and seen Christian, picked up snakes, started talking to him. He kind of mentored me along in the beginning. And then like right after that stop, I went to Miguel's, me and him just happened to hit it off and got along pretty good. And so we just continued and that, that led into uh, me just shooting a video over there at his house a couple times. And then Jesse from Freedom Breeder, man, I just, that was one of those things. I just took the camera. I was kind of following advice I learned from your channel. You know, I was just like, just take the camera. You know what I mean? You never know what could happen. And I just took the camera and so we did, I was up there picking stuff up and I, I bought whatever I was buying. And he was like, Hey man, you want to bring your camera into the hatchling room and do a little filming? And I was like, absolutely. And it just went from there. Yeah. So that, that was all, all thanks to Jesse, man. I mean, he was just totally cool and, and very welcoming. So big shout out to Jesse from freedom breeder. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely cool. It just like, as far as time, usually it comes down to time, you know, as far as like, you know, just show people around the facility, but filming, I mean, so when, when was that? That must've been after the Freedom Breeder channel was started. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was, man, I want to, that was like, ah, the beginning of 2020, that was the beginning of 2020. So Freedom Breeder channel was already well going. And, uh, but I, I think the, the luck of the draw there was when I went up there, I was picking up a pallet of cocoa blocks. When I was up there, it happened to be on a Saturday. So like, as far as business goes, it was pretty dead. It was just him and a couple workers. So it wasn't like the madhouse that's, you know, going on during the week. Yeah. Or every day of the week right now. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking madhouse up there right now. Dude. Um, uh, there's, there's actually been no video. Oh my gosh. I just turned you off completely. I'm sorry. I brought you back. <laughs> There's actually there's actually been no um video for the first time since the channel started there have been no videos for the past couple of weeks just cuz there's not been time like just playing catch up with the crazy backlog of of orders and trying to focus on getting that running again that's just there's it it was already hectic to go up there and try and film I was actually headed up there and he's like dude turn around like I was I was halfway there <laughs> to go film the last time and he's like just turn around <laughs> yeah like, okay well i've seen him post a picture i think from like up above on the balcony or something looking down and there's just pallet after pallet of racks out there you know and i was like wow they're they're really hooked up and, yeah and you read the post and how many orders there's been over the last few weeks and i mean they're, they're pretty busy yeah and all, all those pallets of order that was just that was just one order all yeah, that, all yeah. that stuff. So that's yeah, that was int- it's intense up there. But I, I am going up there tomorrow, so we can expect some new Freedom Breeder videos this week. <clears throat> so unless unless I get the turnaround call again, which I don't think is going to happen, but <laughs> oh, I, I love my weekly Freedom Breeder videos, man. Thursday and then the bloopers at the end. I love it. Yeah, the bloopers is my favorite part too. That that that's what's kept me going on that a lot is is making those. It's just getting to watch. There's so many times I just sit there and be busting up at whatever is happening and that. Uh, I'm glad that he was open to doing that. Cause I was like, what if we do, what if we do bloopers at the end? I feel like people would like that. And people do comment. People are like, dude, the, the bloopers I'm here. I want, I love the bloopers. Some people get yeah. offended by them. Oh, well, <laughs> don't want them. <laughs> That's why I, I think that you see, you like an easy guy to get along with. So you had been to freedom breeder and Miguel's obviously before you can't because you had started your channel by the time you came here. I don't remember yeah. exactly how you presented it or, or whatever, but I I don't always just let people come to my house. Um, you, you had said that you vetted me through Miguel and Jesse and everything before you said yes is what you told me. That makes sense. That must that must have been what it was. I was like, well, if they let you in, I guess I could let you in too. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty welcome. I'm pretty welcoming, but I am you know if somebody lives close by. 
I'm that's when I'm l- more hesitant. Like if somebody happens to be like has been watching the channel for a long time and is coming from like a distance and and that like well, like I hosted Carpet Fest. Obviously, I'm willing to have people just come to my house. Um, right. We try to keep it pretty aloha, pretty welcoming around here. But if somebody just like I've never heard of reached out and they happen to live close by, I'm a little more hesitant just because they live close by. It's like, you know, for, for maybe obvious reasons, I got my family here, all that, like, yeah, know. yeah. There's, there's security reasons. Yeah. I, I'm not so like, you're a couple hours from me. So that's, that's a little bit different, but like, like people that live right here in my town, I'm like, Oh, I don't know, man. I, I don't even know if I want to trade stickers with them. You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's your castle, man. You gotta, you gotta protect, uh, protect the fam. I'm, I'm going to pull up some photos here because they, Oh, that's not the photo I wanted to pull up. It's okay. But these are this is from when you came to visit the house. We got the the boy. We got the Shane. And then, <laughs> that was that was well, and then at Freedom Breeder. We ran into each other again at Freedom Breeder. Yeah. Yeah. Just just randomly. I don't think I even knew you were gonna be I don't think you knew I was gonna be there. <clears throat> no. I was actually only in town for like two days because I was in I just came back from Georgia and was going to Tennessee or so I was in between trips and then I happened to run into you there. That was, that was pretty cool. Very fortuitous, you know? Now, do you, do you see yourself as a likable guy? Like, I feel like you're an easy guy to like, like, I don't, I don't know what to chalk it up to. Like you're just kind of laid back. Um, for, you know, I, I don't know that it, it didn't, sometimes you meet people, especially for the first time. And it's like a little weird, but when we first met, I was like, Oh, this is cool. This guy's cool. Let's just, let's just chill. Like where, where do you get your wizard laid back? Hey, I can just kind of slide into anything. I feel like sliding into it. It's going to be cool. <laughs> probably, <laughs> where does that come from? Uh, that comes from old age. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, 20 years ago, I would have been totally different. I was like a squirrel bouncing off the walls. I mean, I still bounce off the walls, but uh, yeah, that's old age, I think. And just like the experience, like, I don't know. I've been through a lot, so it's not like anything. It's just enjoy every moment, man. You know, life's great. I'm grateful every day waking up, you know. Even when stuff's not going good, man, I'm still alive. Still got the family. Everything's going good. We got food on the table, roof over our head. Man, there's lots of things to be grateful for every day. Absolutely, man. That's absolutely. I try to remind myself that every day, too. And some days easier than others, but... Every day, I, uh, that's what I say too. Every day, there's always a moment in the day when I'm like, "Oh, right, thank God." Even if even if there's physical, emotional pain, like still, it's some. Um, even if things seem to be going completely like just the worst day possible, it's still at some point during the day, turn around and be like, "You know what? Damn, it could be much worse." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I always try to put myself in the other person's shoes too. Like I was going to your house, so I don't want to make you feel like you have to entertain me, even though there is, you know, I mean, that is part of the deal a little bit for you, but I don't want, you know, I don't, you don't need to set up a tea party and cook me a 10 course dinner or nothing, but you did buy Thai food, which was really good. So that was, that was, thank you for that. (laughs) Yeah. We did set up, we did have a picnic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was pretty good. That was like right when you built your table that you're, I think you're talking on it right now. Yeah, Yeah. this was it. Yeah. Do you, I think you were the first person to sit at this table with me. That's true. Yeah. And my first Thai food meal on that table and boba tea or whatever the hell we're drinking it was pretty good stuff man oh bro i haven't had i haven't had thai food in a hot minute i think i'm gonna have to do that tomorrow oh i'm not gonna be able i'm not gonna be here tomorrow son of a (laughs) the next day thursday thursday we're gonna do that yeah that was good you said you're old how how old are you can i is that okay i know you're not supposed to ask a lady that but obviously you're not a lady is that i am i am 42 man with a lot of miles on me though so i'm not (laughs) Tremendously old, but I have a lot of miles. Okay, fair enough. But that's that's not old. That's not yeah. because, but miles I can understand. Miles are sometimes some miles are more hard won than other miles. Yeah, so, I, my my brain still thinks I'm like you know in my early twenties, maybe even a teenager most days though. You know, <laughs> that must be it. And so you you didn't just stick here. Like you went out and and you've done stuff. You've gone out and you've connected with people across the country and actually been to their facilities and, and done filming there as well. And mm-hmm. which is great. I mean, that's, that's what, that's like very forward networking. You're not sitting there. Obviously this is probably the theme for you. You're not just sitting here waiting for things to come to you. You're going out and going places, even all the way across the country to connect with other people that are, that have like interests and, and are doing the same things as you and, and just building it. I mean, 
right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and again, like that goes back to the beginning. Like I knew that's what I had to do in order because people aren't just going to come to you. You know, you got to go to them. And you're probably going to hear a lot of no's when you first start reaching out, especially if you're like you've ne- nobody's ever heard of you and stuff. So you know, you just got to keep trying different people and start keep networking out. And uh, yeah, but through I, I have so much gratitude for YouTube because just me overcoming that that fear of getting in the camera and stuff also helps me talk to people that I don't necessarily know. And you know, that's not normally my personality. Usually, I'm just like keep your head down, keep moving. And but you know, the channel like the first time I met you was at uh, Anaheim, the Super Show. Oh and, yes, you know, I yes, just, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just had to go up and say hi to you. I was doing filming. So like the camera made me go around that show and film stuff because what's the point of filming something if you're not filming anything, you know? So you have to go out there and do it. So I I, I thank YouTube for that, you know? It can be it can be weird sometimes like to be out be out there in the public at a at a show and just like doing camera stuff you know it's even weird i mean yeah. you know this now too it's just like it still feels weird for like to hold the camera yourself and just walk around talking to the camera it feels so so weird sometimes so strange to well do that. even doing even doing like instagram stories too because like you know you're like out in the middle of somewhere and then all of a sudden you're just like talking to it like you're vlogging and like blah 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 and people are looking at you like what's this guy doing you know like he's crazy <laughs> well, it's such a new phenomenon. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that if anybody was doing that, I mean, if you go back, like, I mean, what, how far would you have to go back? Not that far. Like you're talking, you go back like 10, 10 years, 10, 15 years. And you're just <laughs> walking around like this. That was pretty strange. Not that long ago. It was still, it's still, that's why it holds its strangeness, I think, because it was not that strange that long ago. It was very strange. Not that long ago to yeah hold the camera walk around and talk to it yourself like you see tv crews you know all that other stuff you see people like with big big rigs and like oh they're doing they're doing something <laughs> you, you never saw a tv crew person rolling their own camera in front of them and be like here's this they have a crew filming no and like that time i seen you i mean you had the you told me what it's called but i forget what it's called it's like the counterbalance for when you were walking filming the line and i was like man cusco is like professional here i am like just walking with my cheesy tripod bouncing along you know and you were like swooping by i was like man that's goals (laughs) i try to be somewhat professional i think we can all anybody who's watched any more than like three videos can can attest to the fact that it doesn't keep (laughs) you know hey there's definitely a balance though you know like i want to say thank you to you because you turned me on to like real vloggers when that day i hung out at your house like, hey, go check these guys out, you know, Maddie Hapoa and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that led me down a whole rabbit hole. So my, honestly, my channel changed because of the, the channels you suggested to me, you know, that's like my whole outlook on everything changed just by watching those guys. Yeah, it's, there's but, something to be said for broadening your horizons on the, the content you're consuming, because it's definitely going to affect, it affects everything, right? I mean, we sometimes take it for granted being that we're so surrounded by it all the time now. There's content out there endless mountains and mountains and mountains of content and any of it you watch is going to affect you like in some way you're going to think about you're watching it it's it's powerful and what you consume is often going to affect if you put out content it's going to at some point affect either whether it's like you're like i'm not going to do that or that's something i want to incorporate the broader you can go on that the the better which is why i don't watch too much um content on on reptiles on youtube i i don't which sound which is maybe weird uh but i just find that it just helps me just do what i'm gonna do and not be so influenced by what other people are are doing even if that comes to like breeding ball pythons you know then affect too much because i had this goal in the beginning and i've still managed to kind of keep going down that line um with a couple of little things around, but too much outside influence, I think can have a negative effect on that possibly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, I know, like, for example, if I'm going on a trip and I'm going to be filming, like going to the East coast to meet some breeders or something like before I go on that trip, I'll go watch some like Casey Neistat and like Jake Frew for some 
uh, inspiration on just like camera angles and B-roll and stuff. And then, then I go on my trip, like with that kind of stuff in my head and then film and stay away from the reptile channel while I'm out filming. And then when I come back and edit, then I go back to my normal uh, reptile channels that I watch. But yeah, just, that's just me. Yeah. Some, some people don't realize how much, how much work goes into getting different camera angles. <laughs> Man, I went, so I, I went to pick up a snake and I'm like, man, I'm going to kind of do it like a Casey Neistat style. And I would like film, go to, remind you, my FedEx hub is literally like half a mile, three quarters of a mile from my house. But like just filming, getting in the truck and going down the road and coming back was like a 30 minute ordeal because I had to like pull over, put the camera down, drive by, go back, turn around, come back, get the camera and then like keep doing it, hopscotching down the road. And I'm like, people are going to think I'm insane, you know, but. And then, and then when you edit it all together, it's like less than a minute, you know, I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It can be way less than a minute. I, it's, it's like sometimes, I mean, I'll have literally hours of footage that will end up being <laughs> a five second clip, <laughs> just literal, literal hours of footage to go into this little like, ding, 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 ding done <laughs> yeah 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 I, I i haven't gone to that level yet man i try to i try to use it all i don't i don't know about you but i don't save any of my footage once it's on youtube it's it's there and then i used to do it like that when i was first when i was first filming yeah once i once i exported it i would i would just like keep the final product you know like i'd keep the exported final video that would go up to YouTube. So I at least had that file in case, you know, YouTube crashed and there was some worldwide catastrophe and all the internet went down. So I'd at least have a physical hard drive with my own copy of that finished thing. But in the last year or two, uh, I keep everything just, just in case. Now I've got, I mean, I've got stacks of hard drives that have, and every six months, basically I switch out to a new hard drive which is sometimes a little bit of a process. I'm just starting to streamline. There's always new things that you're learning when it comes to making videos. And, and, and part of it is that the completely unsexy part of it, the part that nobody even wants, like, why would you talk? There's channels dedicated to stuff like this, but, yeah. but stuff that you like, it's the most boring, like how to transfer over your libraries from your other hard drive to this hard drive. Like it, it, there's nothing cool about it, at least not from my perspective. And just like, it just has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some things I got to upgrade. I need to finally upgrade to like Final Cut and do stuff like that. But, you know, I'm still inching along. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. But th that's the other thing. You don't have to like take it that far. You can do, you can do just with your cell phone. You can make some incredible videos of yourself with just a little editing software on your free editing software on your phone and, and your phone itself. And just like, you can just create some amazing stuff with just your phone that the technology on these camera phones these days is just, out of this world yeah i see so many videos out there people comparing like professional cameras to an iphone and you can't even tell the difference half the time unless you really know what you're looking for you know in certain spots but if they really know what they're doing with you know using the, the phone to where well, you can't tell that it's the phone especially for still photos yeah it's, it's like wow I, I incorporate a lot of iphone like as b-roll into my thing where i, I need to my, my sound isn't as good for my iPhone, obviously. So I would need to buy an external mic or something if I really wanted to like use it more, but for B-roll and stuff, it's great, man. I mean, I love it. Yeah. yeah it's great. Especially if you don't happen to have like, you know, there's something happening and you don't have, you almost always have your phone in your pocket unless you're doing one of these nature retreats. Um, yeah. It's almost right there. You can just pull up like, Oh, I need that. And then if you're like on the airplane, you don't have to go digging for your camera bag up top. Or if you're just rolling in the car and you see something, Oh, bam, get that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I get a lot of questions and messages about how to start a channel, what gear I use and stuff. So and that's like a repetitive thing. I always answer. I'm always willing to help anyone, but just, I just want to put that out, out there right now. It's like, I'm by no means a professional. So <laughs> yeah, I, I only know, I only know one way how I do it. And, but there's a lot of other ways to do it. So. Yeah, that's, that's true of everything. I'm, I'm not really professional either. So yeah. Right. <laughs> I just I I act like one on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, I need to, I need to start getting into hyperlapses and stuff. I need I need to figure that out on the iPhone. You know. See, I barely know what that is. I I kind of know what it is. I mean, you're just talking about like a timeline. There's 
This is like time, time lapse where it's like the the longer shutter speed, so it's like oh dragging. right right right. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how you can do that on an iPhone. I'm sure there's a way to pull it off an iPhone. Maybe there's an app. But I did that actually just in the last video I put out on the vlog channel. I did, I did a, you know, a, a time lapse, which it's cool that DSLR has a setting for time lapse, which is sweet. But then you can still manually control the shutter speed. So I just I set it for a one one photo every second time lapse, and then mm-hmm. opened up the shutter. So that it was a one second shutter. So even though it's one one photo a second, it's capturing all of the motion within that second. So it looks like you're just like, like you see all the motion of me walking from the front of the room to the back of the room. It captures that whole blur. So yeah, it gives yeah. it that look. I didn't even realize it was called a hyperlapse. So thank you. I learned that from Maddie, but you know, I, uh... <laughs> I guess I should go back to what, the advice I gave you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Oh man! Oh, I want to show some more. I want to show some more pictures. I only we only showed the picture of me and you. That I know you had a picture of you and Jesse. I didn't have a picture of you and you and Miguel. I wanted to put those up there, but for some reason the picture of you and Jesse wouldn't wasn't working. But let's talk about the uh, the man behind the woman here, Miss, as you refer to her, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Small Town. I recently learned that her her name is Kelly. Is that accurate? Yeah, her name is Kelly. Kelly to be more accurate you know my our last name's kelly and her first name's kelly so she is kelly kelly <laughs> i was wondering so obviously she was over she wasn't like i can't do that i can't be kelly kelly what's cool <laughs> she's like all right i'm kelly kelly <laughs> well right, like right when we were getting married she was like maybe you should take my last name instead and i was like no 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 you're taking me, you know, you're gonna be kelly kelly because a, a quick little story about that like i've known her since i was in elementary school and i told her back then like one day i'm gonna make you kelly kelly and then fast forward like a lot of years, we actually meet back up and we get married. So like my promise was true. You, know? <laughs> you, told her, you said elementary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in like, like well, maybe like fifth, sixth grade, like right in that area. So elementary, maybe lower junior high, you know, but yeah. Hey, that's uh, that's calling it, man. I, see, so you've been doing it since you were a kid. Like I'm going to do this. And you're going to do that with me. Bam. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So you've been, all right. I get it now. You, this isn't something new for you. This, this, Hey, I want to do this with you. And and then all of a sudden it happens. This is just, this is your MO. This is your modus operandi. You just do that. You say, Hey, we're going to do this together. And it just happens. Yeah. And, it, and then I do occasionally get questions just about very, so like, well, how did you do that? Like, I don't know. I just, you did, I don't know. You just said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, you just do it. I don't know. <laughs> how do you do it? I don't know. You just one foot in front of the other and keep going, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to say that you take it to a different level. Like you take it, you take it beyond that because you don't just, you don't just like say I'm gonna do this with you and do that. Like I, there was been, there have been like at least three, four, maybe even five occasions where I'm doing a screen capture of my phone to do some kind of promotion for somebody else's live stream or something I'm doing. It literally has nothing to do with you, and this has happened at least as many times as I just said. And a notification for me will pop in, like saying something self-promoting, like on on my notifications will pop down, and you'll be like randomly in my screen. I, I record my screen maybe. 30 seconds a day tops and I don't even do it every day, but then multiple times it's happened where you pop in on my screen and the notifications while I'm doing a screen record on my phone it, like multiple times. So it's, there's something more to it. There's something more to it than just you like, what the fuck dude? Uh, the, the stars must have been aligned on those times. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I really got a laugh out of that when you shared those and stuff. I'm like, man, that was like such good timing, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and and multiple times a row is the thing. Like, not just not just once. It didn't just happen once on a fluke. It like kept happening. I, I like I stopped recording my screen. It was just <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I recorded my screen a little bit today. I was surprised you didn't pop in on your own screen recording. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, I'm very passionate about any direction I go in any part of life. So if you're going to do it, like do it. That's just play harder, play harder, you know. Make the universe your little bitch. Check it out, universe. This is what's happening. Pop up on Brian's phone right when he starts screen recording. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) exactly, you know. So, well, yeah, I mean, that's all it is, just consistently doing it and a little bit of luck. 
like it was lucky that I I met up. It's lucky I live where I did, so I can meet like Dead Mouse and Jesse and Miguel, and then go to your house, and it's just like a snowball effect, you know, and just keeps going and going and going. Sure, and maybe luck from being way up in this tree and not dying. What is going on here, dude? You oh oh yeah yeah I seen one of those. So that like people ask me like, well, how did you finance Small Town Exotics? So I had a tree business that anytime I wasn't at my normal job, I was trimming trees. And so I took that business and put it all over into snakes. So that's the kind of stuff I used to do in my spare time before I was breeding snakes was I was climbing trees and people were paying me money, trimming trees and stuff. How high exactly are you in this tree right now? Oh, that one's probably like 40 or 50. I mean, Bakersfield doesn't have like extremely giant trees, but like when I lived down in Ventura, you know, there's a lot of big eucalyptus trees down there. You know, they get like 80, 90, but... They, they say they don't get up to a hundred, but I would, once you're up there, you might as well be a hundred once you're way up in the top of those. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. That's uh that's up there. I mean, I'm, I'm a fairly average tree climber, but that, I don't think I've ever done the whole, I'm going to be way high up in this tree while I'm cutting branches off of it move. No, I definitely haven't done that. It's actually quite fun, man. But like when you do it all the time, it turns into work. But like when you do it as a side hustle or whatever, it's actually quite fun, you know, because you're way up there. You're using ropes, swinging around like Tarzan. That was the name of my business, Tarzan's Tree Service. I just swing, <laughs> around, <laughs> swing around like Tarzan and do my work. And yeah, that's yeah, a good, I, I, yeah. That's a good move. So, I like that. I like that name. Yeah. And that's yeah, it is fun. I mean, I I've climbed many a tree, many many a tree in my day. So I understand the love of climbing trees. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I enjoy when you when you have your retakes out in your oak trees and stuff in those videos when you climb up there and stuff like that's right up my alley. I love trees, obviously, or else you know, I used to climb them all the time. I love them. Well, what about what about this right here? What about this uh, as a Batman? Oh yeah, um, I can't see the photos you're showing. I so. know, I know. It's a it's it's a problem that I'm never gonna fix. You know what's gonna happen, Shane? I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen right now. By the time I get everything dialed in completely to where these live streams are great and like everything is super perfect, then I'm going to be done doing live streams with these things. I'm going to be back at shows doing them in person with people. And then, it, so I'm not even going to do it. Which is, I'm just going to tell you what photo, I'm, what photo I'm pulling up. I'm not going to StreamYard. I'm not going to do StreamYard. It's not happening. I put too much work into this little platform here that I got going on with all my little custom background drops. And like, I'm not going to StreamYard, dude. I don't, it's just not happening. Well, your show turns out good on the viewer side, and that's what matters. Okay, so. good. As long, yeah, as long as that matters. I, I think I, I'm calling like maybe like oh, three more months of live streams, and then we'll still do the Zoom calls with guests. We'll still do that, but but I'm just oh, – I'm not going to talk about it because I'm going to get real <laughs> negative. <laughs> the Batman. I asked you to send me all the pictures you wanted to, and you sent me one picture of us. This is a reptiles show. Shane? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I forget about the reptile side of it sometimes, though, too. So uh, the Batmans, uh, I was really lucky on that. I hit four Batmans out of 10 eggs. And with that pairing, it was one in 16 chance, man. So that was like, that's, my, that's also my first season. So that was like my clutch of my first season. That was my crowning achievement there. And uh, yeah, I was really lucky. So yeah, that's pretty a... proud of those Batmans. Yeah, well, how many, how many, so you had 10 eggs, how many were Batman? Four. Wow, oh my God. <laughs> with, with a one in 16 chance on that, so. What, what was the pairing again? Did you say the pairing? I had, a, it was a blade clown to a leopard spot nose het clown. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was, yeah. It was one, one in, in 16. 16. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good odds, 10 eggs, you get four of them. Sometimes I think that, that the odds gods just, like people like if you if you're a good person you'll get some good odds is that how it works well you know i did have some bad you know it's not always rainbows and unicorns so well, i no. had my ups and downs with my first breeding season like egg bound female she ended up passing away i had another girl like totally slug out 13 slugs and then that batman clutch was like right in the middle of those two girls so like i went into it failing had a good success and then the next clutch was all slugs so, I mean, it's definitely ups and downs. It's probably a level balance in there. I just happened to hit it good on the on the clutch that I really wanted. 
I hit it good. So it might have something to do with the female though, because that female was the same female that Miguel had three Batmans with. And then I, he sold her to me and then I had four Batmans with her. So she just might just be good at throwing her jeans, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I will say that there's, there's something to that. I think, because I, I definitely have, like like the pairing that I do for the sunsets, the one that I've done yeah. for the last three years, that we have always hit sunsets, and we've almost always hit we've we've hit combo sunsets every time, and almost always Enchi sunsets. You know, three two out of three times we hit the whole Enchi cinnamon sunset and hit the whole the whole thing out of it. So it's and the Enchi just comes across strong. Like the Enchi is all over the place in those pairings. Like that that male just it'd be so interesting to see some of the the genetic like do some genetic testing and see like how this is really working like is it really a 50 50 chance like i mean we have these theories about how it works you know it make that makes sense with the two chromosomes and you, know, you got 50 percent chance to pass this on 50 percent ch- chance to pass this on but i know that we, so, well all work we've done with human dna like it's it turns out that you don't just like if your dad was half russian you're not a quarter russian necessarily it's like you could have a different percentage of, of Russian. It's not, it doesn't work like, it's not so split and dry, like more of it. I don't know. It's so complex and we feel like we're just barely scratching the surface, especially when it comes to snakes and ball pythons and, and any, any genetics in any of these reptiles. But it would be so cool to actually see what is really going. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when you can actually film what's happening. Like when it's all happening in the egg, when the, when the when the cells are splitting and the the yeah. DNA is splicing together, like I I can't wait until that technology is that that nano nano macro technology filming, like to be actually see that stuff happening, dude. Yeah. How freaking cool would that be? That'd be really cool. And no, I agree because I I've had males here that I produced. Like I have a banana black pastel Mojave male that I mess around with these banana combos with and. He throws a lot of bananas, but hardly ever throws that black pastel. So, I mean, I'm just seeing a trend with that male. I don't know if it's the, the gene black pastel, but with him, he doesn't seem to throw it that often, but he throws a lot of bananas, you know? And then like that, that Batman clutch, she gave me gal three Batman. She gave me four. And uh, I, I just keep saying that to rub it into me gal because I beat his record. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> But I think there is a lot to be said for that. So like we try to apply mathematics and statistics to it because it makes sense to us, but there's, you know, nature is involved here. So there's greater forces at work than we can explain with simple statistics and numbers and stuff. Yeah. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. For, for certain. I, I agree a hundred percent. I think most people would. Um, yeah. There's been times like I've not, I have not hit a single super inchy anything, anything. I've I've been pairing. I've wanted to make something super enchy like like aside from getting into clown like wanted to make clown pies as you know coral gold clown pie, or banana clown pies whatever you want to call them. Um, when I first decided to start breeding, I also wanted to make something super enchy. Any, at this point, anything, anything. Yeah. I've I've got so many enchy to enchy pairings that I've had produced eggs from and have never ever hit a single super enchy anything. I think you should keep on trying because when I hear people say that, then it's like all of a sudden they hit them for like two years straight or something, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm sure I've got pairings right now. I've got a female that's that just ovulated with a, another enchi to enchi pairing, man. I, I've they're happening. The pairings I've been doing the since the beginning. Some of my first pairings, the first season had enchi to enchi in them, and just still somehow. And like I said, that enchi um, had sunset male. He's been the father for several of these, and he throws a bunch of enchi out there. You know, the, the yeah. Enchi, but for some reason, whatever it is, I don't know. Getting two inches to line up seems to be hard, huh? But, yeah, but there's the there's the other odds, though, too. So, like, we had a, a – my wife really liked so our little pied project, basically, for her. And uh, so we had a, a visual pied combo male paired to just a, a pastel het pied female. So we hit four out of five pieds, so we did good on that. But the entire clutch was male, like the whole thing. So <laughs> like no female. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to have my wife cut cut all the eggs because she's hitting the odds. And then they all turn out males. I was like, all right, no, take the scissors away from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did something like that one time at uh, 
at, at prehistoric pets. Actually, it was the first time I ever cut an egg because um, I don't really cut eggs much over here, but they were having like a whole party over there and, and Tim was, you know, doing some stuff. Jay was doing some stuff and they were letting people cut eggs. And every one I cut wasn't normal. <laughs> and to the point where they're like, all right, you can't cut anymore. You know, there's, there's no no more. Like then they finally did let me cut one more. I think maybe I not not I may have blocked out what actually happened from my memory. It may have been that even when they let me do one more just to try and redeem myself on maybe even on the last egg, it's just like is it, it Obviously, if you if you believe 100% in science, we know that me cutting the egg didn't turn it into a normal. But do we? Do we know that? I don't know. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, you could have been just giving off the normal vibe and it just made it happen. That's like, that goes to that, uh, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, did, did it make a noise? You know, like maybe you were just projecting normals. And, and until you cut it and seen it, it wasn't a normal until you cut it. Yeah. See, that's a, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's possible. Um, it's possible. Don't don't rule out possibilities. That, one thing that gets me is when people rule out all possibility, like the, the possibility that maybe you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Maybe you have no idea what's actually happening in the world. And if you close yourself off to those possibilities, then you don't. You right. you don't know that there's other possibilities out there. And that can go. That can put you in such a small little rabbit hole, little narrow version of a life that. It can get real. But that's this is what leads to the downfall of people's lives. I think when they get put themselves into a little tiny narrow existence, rule out all these other. It can be safer that way. Like this is what I know. This is where I go. It's right down there, and this is this is good. But then, what about all this? What about all this? Right. right. I, I I've learned that in my old age. That's part of being old. You know this expanding your horizons man yeah <laughs> i know sorry i'm getting a little weird on you um what, what is the, folks in the chat sorry i i i've not been ignoring you people on purpose i just sometimes it's very distracting to try and talk with our guests but but if you guys want um to ask shane any questions right now if you're not coming to the after meeting in zoom i'd like to extend this opportunity now to you folks in the live chat to ask whatever questions of Shane um, are okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put this up there. We got, we got, a, <laughs> we got a super chat and it okay. from Anna. It's not really a question. I think she's trying to teach us the genetics. So it, like I'm trying to get all ethereal with the genetics and she's bringing back the science. Like Brian put down whatever you were smoking. This is, <laughs> chromosomes on their own do not impact each other oh wait yeah right so so if they don't get together then they don't do anything to each other that makes sense like if you don't like if the sperm doesn't meet the egg then nothing happens that makes sense is that what we're saying oh but i just had a partho clutch so no sperm was needed so life still finds a way man jurassic part was true man that stuff is true right yeah no that's oh you had one yeah yeah just recently that oh. i'm still waiting on them to shed out Congratulations, man. That's that's fantastic. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, that experience led me to talking to Warren Booth and messaging back and forth, and he shared a lot of knowledge with me. And now I've been reading scientific papers on it, and I mean, just like little occurrences along this little journey, man, just branch you out to all different directions that you never would have thought of in the beginning, you know? Yeah, totally. I, man, I, I'd want to get Warren on the channel a long time ago before he was and it was going to be well it was all again it was going to be an in-person thing and it, but it's never uh i haven't we haven't done it yet obviously right. but we got uh low life exotics throwing some peace snake and love yeah and then we got uh john over at elite wants to he says he's gonna be in bakefield this weekend do you mind if he stops by you know john uh sort of through all the chats and stuff he's up he's up there by the fresno group somewhere hit me up on instagram john yeah i i can i can vouch for john i know john I've, yeah i've met with john many times in person either at, at freedom breeder or at shows um yeah john's a man what is your uh d's balls and exotics dylan over d's balls and exotics which dylan oh great great job over on the uh connected by creatures stream the other night i was i was popping in for that a little bit 
Um, that was cool to see over there, man. Which was, where did his question go? See, I lost, lost it. I lost <laughs> it. He had a question. Oh, what is, what is your favorite hobby outside of snakes? Uh, outside of snakes, man, music. Like I, I used to play somewhat and everything, but I've had like ulnar nerve injuries to both hands. So that's kind of limited, whatever. There's a whole bunch of other reasons, but music to me is, is almost like a religion, you know? So that would be, I could dive off in rabbit holes of music for days and weeks and whatever. So that's, that's my uh, other thing outside of reptiles. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense as to why I was like, oh, this guy's cool. You have to, you got that. There's something about treating music like a religion that really teaches you more than sometimes religion can. If you, if you really dive into the meaning of all these different, all those different songs out there where people were actually, it's something, there's something to be said for it, man. There just is. Or, or like, like a song you liked, like I'm dating myself now, but say like 25, 30 years ago, like you, you grew up listening to it as a little kid and then you revisit it. Now that I'm like I'm older and I'm like, man, this has a total different meaning now that I've experienced this much life, you know, and whether the, that songwriter meant, meant it that way, that's how I'm taking it at this moment, you know, like Don Henley's great for that. I mean, his songs are so meaningful, like through his whole career, Don Henley is like one of my personal, like favorite songwriters. Yeah. You know? Okay. Then what's, what's your theory on Hotel California then? Cause there's, there's many out there. Like the band claims some things, some people claim other things like we're getting started to get into the occult. Like there's all these different theories on Hotel California, what it really means. So I, I don't know, man. I've heard that. That's what actually one of the songs I kind of stay away from in my older days, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, one of the, but I mean, as, as a local thing and just the life, the people I grew up around, it was always supposed to be for the drug rehab prison down in Norco. That's what they always said it was about in my little local circle, CRC. There's a prison down in Norco, California. And supposedly that's what it was about because I think, I don't remember which one. Suppo one of them supposedly went through that prison at some point. I don't know if it's true. It's a rumor. You never know. I mean, if it was going to be, any of them, I, I guess it would be uh, Joe Walsh, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think, yeah, Joe Walsh. He's like, <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I had an impersonator, Joe Walsh, contact me on Instagram saying he wanted to send me like $500,000. I was like, I so wish you were the real one, man. That would be so cool. <laughs> He he really he really brought the the rock and roll to the Eagles. Like he was the most rock and roll of the Eagles yeah. when he when he joined the band. That was when it like really went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Joe Walsh, man. It was good stuff. I've missed the. I've been to several Eagles concerts. They're they're one of my favorite bands out there for sure. Um, I went I went deep off on that question because if we can go on that one. We could do a whole another live stream on that on that yeah, on these subjects. for sure. Um, <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm, I'm missing stuff. I gotta, I gotta stick to it. Oh, uh, what's your Philip whose shirt I'm wearing? It was just, this shirt just popped too hard. I had to put it on. I got it out of the box today and I was like, oh man, look at that thing. <laughs> I'm going to be distracting over here with this shirt. He's he wants to know what your, what is your vape setup and what is your go-to juice? Well, that's a funny question. My go-to juice is the Johnny Cream Puff strawberry uh, pancakes or whatever it's supposed to be. And then I use uh, a Crown 3 uh, tank with a, I don't know what these are. They're the waterproof, shockproof Aegis mod because like I drop them and run them over and do all kinds. And this one survives through all that. So, yeah. But I'm down to like a three milligram. So I'm kind of trying to fade it out, but. That's a whole, that could be a whole nother podcast too, you know? <laughs> I wish I was okay with uh, smoking cigars in my snake room. I'd be smoking one right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to start doing this outside. How about uh, Dylan again? What are your top three favorite inspirational vlog channels outside of the reptile hobby? I would have to say Jake Frew. Uh, Maddie and Peter McKinnon are kind of like tied in there, kind of like in the same. I almost like group them together, even though it's two separate channels. Like if I watch one of their videos, I go over and watch the other guy's video too, like back to back. And uh, 
uh, outside of that, I, don't know, I, I got on a kick of the old Casey Neistat videos, man. Like, cause I missed that whole thing. And then like, especially when he started daily vlogging again, like for a minute, like I was there for everyone every yeah. day. Like as soon as I see the notification, like I'm there, man. Yeah. Like me too. His, his videos, like to the naked eye don't seem that hard, but like, they're so they're badass. I mean, I, they're, there's they're there's a lot of work that goes into them if for a, for that very short video like that it's that same thing it's probably like hours and hours and hours of footage for a five minute video and it's just he's really good at stories he was the original vlogger he like he was yeah. he, he was vlogging before youtube you know yeah so and, and i mean just like so like you know he's leaving the house and you, you know you see like these little clips of him like reaching for the doorknob and stuff and then he walks out of his house and it's a drone shot from above of him walking to his truck I mean, like that takes time for him just to get out of the house and go to the truck, even though it's like a, a 30 second, you know, actual chore of going to your truck. But for him to do all that, that's actually pretty time consuming. And well, I really appreciate that more since I kind of film a little bit and stuff. So, yeah, well, if, you, if you're able to make it, you're like your full time thing, which, oh, dude, I've been thinking about cutting back on a couple of things I don't need to be doing just so I can focus a bit more on, cause I really love making the videos and I, I've, I've like opened up to doing all these other things that are very, they, they end up being very time consuming. I don't really think about it when I was, when I say, yeah, let's do this. And then it ends up being, I, I forget that, Oh, there's only so many hours in the day. I was just listening to a podcast today and they said something about that. They said, uh, you know, people think they can just do everything. I was like, yeah, that's, that's me. I think I just do everything. And then I'll, next thing I know, I got no time left um, to do anything. So I'm, I need to take my own advice. I think that's what I need to do. Let's work about that. Okay, sorry. Back to you, Shane. Um, what? Where? Your, there's another question coming in. If you do, oh, oh, Moose. Moose is wondering if he can throw away your leftovers from Geno's. He was keeping it in case he came back. <laughs> <laughs> a big shout out to Moose, man. I mean, like he gave me the tour of the Nashville area, man. Like very cool guy, very humble, very welcoming, like. When you think of Southern hospitality, that's Moose, man. Like he just brought me right into his house and took me on tours of the place. So thank you, Moose. Nice. That's great balls of fryer, of course. Um, right. Anna, again, what's what is Gen X in ball pythons? Gene X in ball pythons. Oh, Gene X is what you sorry. That's something that that's a JKR thing, and I have some of it in my collection. Man, you have to go read his article, you know. I kind of lean like it might be more of a line bred polygenic trade or something. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. But when you hit on it, you know it. Cause it just, every shed, it just keeps getting brighter and brighter. Like I was scratching my head at a couple and then actually Rich McCall, I, I messaged back and forth to him. He's like, just hold on to those ones longer and you'll notice them getting brighter. And man, like he wasn't lying. I mean, they just keep getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And it seems to work it's more amplified in a visual pied versus the heads. So somehow it's kind of tied into the pieds, but I have a het pied version that you could tell it's gene X, but I don't know. You'd have, you'd be better off asking Justin Kabilka because that was definitely his thing that he originated. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a good place to go for that gene. Um, yeah. <laughs> hyped up reptiles. If, if you could pick three incomplete dominant genes to change the pattern on genetic stripe, what would you use? Mm. That question is for both of us, but I'm not answering it because I don't, I don't have the answer to that. I did see, uh, I believe it was an acid version that looked really sweet. And, you know, that's a good gene anyways, a nice pattern disruptor. So uh, I, I like what it does with leopard too, makes it more bold and kind of cleans it up because it brings all the back uh, the black up to the lines where it's supposed to be. And, uh, I don't know. I, I I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a spot nose into it because I haven't seen a spot nose genetic stripe yet. But you know that that would be my first three go tos that that just rattle in my head, shooting from the hip. Cool. And uh, last question before we get out of here from Aurora Exotics, last week's guest. Um, if you can hybridize any two animals, she didn't she didn't let me choose anything here. She said any two animals. What do you choose? Man, I think I'm still with, I think they should put IMGs over in anacondas because who wouldn't want a black, big anaconda? So get those IMG boas over into the anacondas. And I seen Kevin McCurley doing like sun glow boas to anacondas. So 
I mean, if anyone was going to do it, I'd assume he'd do it because I don't have the space for that. But that's what I would do. IMG and Anaconda. All the purists are just frothing at the mouth, Shane. Froth, froth. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? How heresy, dare. sacrilegious, you know? <laughs> Well, but I did. I did just get the the more complete boa constrictor from Vin Russo by suggestion of Aurora and Lance. So they're trying to, you know, change me to the purist. Yeah, I'm gonna read. Yeah, do your reading. Do your reading. You gotta learn the rules before you break them. That's what they say. I say break those rules. <laughs> if you break them without knowing that they weren't even there, though, are you really breaking them? No, uh, you're that... not. It's just the whole. That's <laughs> back to the tree in the forest. It's back to the normal <laughs> egg. It, unless you cut yeah. it, unless you hear it, no didn't happen. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right shane well is there anything you want to tell the people before we get out of here no i, I just want to tell you thank you i appreciate you asking me to be on and uh if anyone needs any like wants me to answer any questions or whatever instagram is always the thing facebook please don't message me there that messenger sucks That's the business one true the business one. yes it sucks I'll, I'll miss them for weeks so instagram right on well thank you sir um Folks, if you didn't, if you want more questions for Shane, we always got the after call and Zoom happening. But Shane, thank you. We'll see you over there in the after party in just a moment, my friend. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, folks. Shane Kelly, Small Town Exotics. There is a link down in the description for his channel, so you can go right over there and and check it out and see what what kind of stuff he's putting out. See what he's doing. See what he's all about. Check out his snakes. Check out his family. Check out his videos. Check out his room. It's all there. It's all there for the taking. All there for you to consume with your eyeballs. Next week, we've got on Mr. Dan Magano, who specializes in short tail pythons. I've been wanting to have Dan on for a hot minute and I actually got to meet him in person for the first time over at New England Reptile Distributors a couple weeks ago. Cool guy. Funny guy. Knows his stuff with short tail pythons, and uh, you can tune in next week to see Dan. Tomorrow, we've got the vlog channel. I'm doing an uncut. I'm going to be clickbaiting the shit out of you, but it, you're going to like it. It's going to make you feel good about yourself. So I hope to see you guys there. Take care of yourselves. See you next week right here on Triple Biscuits and Gravy TV. Give it to your mama. Mm -hmm.